Hello, my name is Eric McIntosh. I'm a student at Columbia Southern University taking the local state um, government course. Uh, today I'm going to give a presentation on California politics. My hope is by the end of this course, or this presentation anyway, that you'll be able to explain the political party structures and we're going to focus on the Republican and Democratic party structures. Uh, that you'll be able to identify the types of primary elections used in California. Um, and that's going to include the primary elections for voter nominated office positions like the governor position and of course the president of the United States. Um, we're also going to identify qualified California party organizations and there are a handful of those in California. We'll discuss campaign methods used by uh, Governor, Ca Governor candidate Larry Elder who is uh, the current front runner in the recall election that's going on here in California. We'll also discuss uh, portioning and districting in California. We'll identify the government structure here in California and uh, we'll discuss party issues, uh, some of the party issues that are going on. All right. Uh, so the first thing we'll talk about is the polit political party structure of the Democratic Party because uh, this is the party that dominates here in California. Uh, the leadership of the party uh, includes the chair, vice chairs, multiple vice chairs, uh, secretary, treasurer, finance chair, senate, democratic leader, and uh, the speaker of the house. Additionally, so the political party structures um, are, are made up of, of, of leaders and activists. So some of the leaders and activists also include uh, committees and associations in the Democratic um, Party. And that those committees and associations include the Democratic National Committee, De Democratic Governors Association, uh, the Senatorial Campaign Committee, Congressional Legislative Campaign Committees, the Attorney General, Attorneys General Association, the ASDC, and then the Association of Secretaries of State. On the Republican side, uh, the Republican leaders and activists are organized into board of directors. And that includes uh, the chairperson, vice chair, secretary, treasurer, multiple regional vice chairs, um, immediate past chair, Republican National Committee uh, members, also included is the Budget Committee Chair, County Chairman's Association President, Board of Equalization represent, Representative, the Senate, Assembly, and Congress Representatives, uh, Team Cal Chair, and uh, General Counsel. So, in discussing primary elections in California, uh, the policy for the voter-nominated office primary elections um, was established in 2011, the Top 2 Candidate Open Primary Act of 2011. And what that act states is that all candidates are listed on a single ballot. So here in California, when we have a primary election uh, for go governor, for example, the uh, every single governor candidate is listed on that uh, ballot. And no matter which party you um, are from, you can elect your favorite or favorites. Um, all candidates are listed in a single ballot and then the top two vote getters move on to the general election. The presidential primary elections are slightly different. different. It's a closed, in the closed presidential primary, only voters with a, with a party preference can vote for their party's nominees. So if you're a Republican, you cannot vote for a Democratic um, president in the, in the um, primary elections. There's also a modified closed presidential primary, which runs a little bit differently. The voters with the party preference and those who do not state a party preference can vote for the party nominee. Uh, the qual the, and then there are some rules um, around that uh, modified closed pre presidential primary. So I mentioned we have a uh, multiple, a handful of qualified California party organizations here. And um, of course, the Democratic and Republican parties are the most well known and certainly the ones that dominate here in California. Um, but we do have uh, the American, in addition to those, we have the American Independent Party, 
Um, and there's actually a, an independent assembly member in the, in the California State Assembly currently. Um, we also have the Green Party, the Libertarian Party, the Peace and Freedom Part, and the Peace and Freedom Parties. Now, campaign methods. There are many campaign strategies used throughout the years um, to win elections, and, and data collection and social media has played a very large part in campaign strategies and campaign methods recently. Uh, Larry Elder, as I mentioned, is the front runner in the um, in the recall election for our governor here in California. Um, and Larry Elder, I'm going to use him as an example of some of the strategies and methods he's used. Uh, he has gotten many ador endorsements. So uh, an endorsement strategy is, is uh, Elder or uh, candidate Elder has gotten uh, California pub public servants like senators, state assembly members, mayors and council members um, to endorse him. Um, it also has gotten organizations such, such as assemblies and news organizations. And uh, this one actually makes me laugh a little, but uh, he's got artists and public figures. And I personally have heard him, um, I don't know about brag, but has talked about the, um, the artists and public figures he has endorsing him, including Clint Eastwood and Chuck Norris, as he mentioned. Uh, he also has, uses advertisements, of course, uh, social media and television. He actually is a radio personality, so clearly he uses radio um, to um, spread his message. Uh, and Larry Elder uh, is using negative campaign tactics. Um, and uh, in a book written on um, tactics or... or uh, on campaign strategies, uh, they say that negative campaign tactics, tactics are often used because they're less risky. And in, in that book uh, by Skinner, as the author, um, in that book they talk about how when you use negative tactics, you don't have to state what you believe. Because when you state what you believe, you anytime you make a statement like that, you tend to push somebody away because somebody does not believe that. However, negative tactics, all you're talking about is what you don't like about an individual. Uh, so Larry Elder has jumped on that, um, that strategy and has called G Gavin Newsom um, arrogant, smug, and corrupt, um, among many other things. Larry Elder is also using a fear tactic, which tends to work on some people. Um, and is stating that, you know, with Gavin, Gavin, with Gavin Newsom as governor, um, we are losing, people are losing jobs, they're losing businesses, our, our children's education is declining. And most of this is, is around uh, COVID and uh, Gavin Newsom's, Governor Newsom's um, tactics on managing COVID-19. All right, so then move on to apportioning and districting. So apportioning and districting occurs once every 10 years after the U.S. Uh, census. Apportioning makes the population of a state so that, he, so that the appropriate number of members are seated in the House of Representatives for each state. So this is all based on um, how many people live in each state. And of course, the U.S. Census um, identifies the population for each state. Uh, the California Citizens Redistricting Commission was established after voters, voters passed the Voters First Act in 2008. And uh, this commission redraws uh, California's district boundaries. Um, and that, uh, and as you can see in figure three here, it, um, this is an example of the state congressional districts. And, and each district here um, is drawn by this this commission. There's also uh, congressional districts, uh, state assembly districts, and state board of equalization districts. All right, California government structure. So we'll talk about the executive branch and the legislative branch, and of course the judicial branches as well. But we'll start with the executive branch, and as you can see from Figure Four here, it takes an army to run the governor's office to run the executive branch. Um, in, in
within the exec executive branch are many um, jobs, but I'm just going to touch on kind of the, the top of the organizational chart. And that includes, of course, the governor, the California governor and, and first partner, and directly working for them under the executive secretary and cabinet secretary. Uh, we also have the lieutenant governor, secretary of state, insurance commissioner, state superintendent of public instruction, attorney general, state controller, state treasurer, and uh, state board of equalization. California legislative branch uh, includes the uh, California State Senate, which is made up of 40 state senators, 31 Democrats and nine Republicans in California. You can see who, uh, who holds the, the Senate here in California. And then each senator represents 931,349 Californians. Also in the legislative branch is the California State Assembly, and that's made up of 80, assembly, 80 state assembly members. One is currently vacant, but again, you can see the Democrats dominate the Republicans in California. And this is that one independent uh, here in California who has made the uh, state assembly uh, standing proud. All right, the judicial branch includes uh, the Chief Justice of California. There are six associate justices, and each is appointed or nominated by the governor. We have the Court of Appeals, Courts of Appeal, I should say, which are cases are decided by three uh, judge panels. And then lower down, we have the Superior Courts or Trial Courts, and California has 58 trial courts. All right, we'll talk briefly um, on California party issues and we'll end with this. Um, as you can see from the presentation, um, the Democrats dominate here in California. It's a very liberal democratic state. Um, and in the democratic uh, platform, they identify kind of their priorities and goals. And uh, one of them, I think it was right at the top, was to promote the rights, opportunities, and safety of Californians. So mandates surrounding COVID-19 has people wondering if California is doing enough to, um, to secure our rights as Californians. And there are arguments, of course, on both sides of that. And then opportunities, we got failing businesses and job loss and a recession. Again, probably mostly related to COVID-19, but um, many believe the handling of COVID-19 by our state has led to some of these things. And then the safety of California's wildfires and droughts are, are um, continuous, it seems to be here in California. And again, there are citizens wondering if California is doing enough to help stop these wildfires and um, drought and assist with the drought. Also in that, uh, in their platform, the democratic platform, they state they wanna support an excellent public education system. And again, with COVID-19 and children unable to attend schools due to the restrictions um, that, that the state has, people are questioning again, is this goal, this priority, um, being really um, established. Uh, the, Democratic, uh, the Democratic platform also states that climate change is a threat to the future of humanity. Um, consequently, California has, has strict policy, policies around renewable energy, building codes, and vehicle codes. And there are, again, citizens who see that as an issue. Um, and there also is the right to live without fear of gun violence, which of course everyone can agree with, but California has the strictest gun laws in all of the United States, and, uh, and some people believe that those strict gun laws are not the best way to run a state. So all of these things kind of point to what I believe are, have led to this recall election currently in progress here in California for to recall Gavin or Newsom. Um, uh, uh, 
polls are showing that it will likely not pass, that he will not get recalled, but it still brings up the question, you know, are these issues, should these issues be addressed? Are they being handled um, by our government here in California? And that is, that is the big question. So thanks for uh, listening. Um, I hope you learned a few things about California politics.